Hello everyone, it's Dr. Johnson, and I'd like to welcome you to episode one of True Salus, Injury Recovery and Performance Education Online. I'd be lying to you if I was to tell you that it's not a little strange right now to be standing in an empty exercise studio in an empty building due to the disruption to our business operations. We're concerned and have been frustrated by our ability to continue to support you. We've seen you working so hard to make gains and to believe in the process of injury recovery. And we want to make sure that you know that our entire team is here to support you in any way we can. One of the first ideas that came to us was, well, how can we stay in communication and keep those gains going? Because not, your improvements obviously mean a lot to you, but they definitely mean a lot to us. It's our passion. So what we've done is we've decided to bring to you over the next 28 days, 28 episodes of education and movement programming to keep you going. We don't want you to stop, we want to keep you going. I know in my own household right now, as we're under lock and key, things have slowed down from an activity perspective. And that creates a whole host of problems when you're trying to recover from injury and or maintain some performance gains. So the program that we're gonna to bring to you is gonna be amazing. The whole team got together, they've lined up some programming designed to keep your whole body addressed. We're gonna be targeting workouts to your upper body. We're going to be targeting lower workouts to your lower body. We're also going to do some full body programming. And in these workouts, some of them will be specifically for mobility work, some of them will be specifically for strength, and some using yoga protocols. Each workout is roughly about 20 minutes long. And most of our educational segments at the beginning of each video will be roughly five to seven minutes. So bear with us. But the goal here is this. When you are done utilizing this 28 day, 28 episode series, you should be in a new place with your health. I wanna challenge you to go inward, to focus on your own health right now in this time. Turn off the TV and stop focusing on some of the negativity in the news and some of the fear and the panic that's going on right now and focus on what you can do to support yourself first and second, your family and your loved ones. That's the programming we're going to bring you. I want to challenge you to dive in. I want, you to, I want to challenge you to participate in the process. And I'd also like to challenge you to give us feedback at info at trusalis.com. It's really, really, really important to us that you do so. We're here to service you in any way we can. I also want to let you know, for those of you who are comfortable, we have gone through this office, and when you come in and see it, it is spotless. Every surface, every corner, every nook, cranny has been wiped down and cleaned, and we have a cleaning protocol and a spacing protocol for our patient visits now to make sure that everyone is safe. We honor and respect your health, and we're going to do everything we can to continue to service you. So for those of you who would like to receive care, we are here Monday through Friday providing chiropractic services. Our exercise studio is shut down. But for those of you who need care and are looking to receive care, we are still providing that in a very safe, effective format and will continue to do so. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the series coming up. The first seven to eight sessions you're going to see or episodes you're going to see, we're going to pound the nutrition. I've asked my sister-in-law, Colleen Carney Rugi, to come in and to discuss with us all the things we can do from a nutrition perspective to get you online and keep supporting your body when you need to make, obviously you keep repairing yourself from the injury recovery perspective, but also we're talking about immunity and health and the big picture. Some big concerns I've seen when going to the grocery store, everyone's buying up things at the grocery store and everyone's sitting around and huddling. Activity levels have dropped and all the things that you would do to increase inflammation, packaged foods, alcohol, disrupted sleep, lower levels of hydration, and definitely lower levels of movement. All those things don't add up to a healthier equation, they add up to an unhealthier you. So, I'm challenging you right now to flip the script on that. I wanna see you be positive, I wanna see you engaged, and I wanna see you doing the best you can do to stay in relationship with us while we get you through this process. 28 days, 28 episodes, 28 workouts. Be ready. So follow me right now. I want you to enjoy your first workout. Nate's bringing it to you. It's a full, full body, 20 minute mobility workout. You're gonna love it. And tune in for episode two. I look forward to seeing you soon. Hello, it's Nate once again. We're here with some full body mobility. Uh, we're gonna start out with a couple of things for the core. Um, 
move on to some upper and then lower body stuff to finish out this particular workout. So uh, the first one you're familiar with, we've done it back in the beginning of baselines. And depending on what level baseline you're at, we still do that. So you want to start at the edge of your mat, feet about a foot apart, toes forward. You're going to lay all the way back. And we're going to do a bridge. So with some leg extension. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your bridge is set up, palms facing the ceiling so we're not influenced to push through the ground. The first thing we're going to do is close the gap between the ground and your back. So tilt your pelvis on, embrace the tilt, pull that down. And we're going to lock a bridge up as high as you can. From here, you're going to take one leg and extend it straight out and back down. Now the level that we extend it to is going to be to the other leg's level. Okay, so we're not going to go way up here like that. Maintaining that bridge, you just want to reach straight out, back down. Try to maintain a high bridge without dipping your hip down every time you lift it up. Okay, so up, extend, back down. Back down, okay? And then you go back down before going to the other side. So you can do about anywhere from 10 reps each side to 30 seconds per side. This is a tough one, so I wouldn't ask that you hold it too long each leg uh, to avoid breaking down during the exercise. So once again, your feet are good, foot distance apart, straight forward, palms upward, lock the bridge out, extend the leg, back down. Touch your foot to the ground every time, back down. Reassess, so re-push your bridge up throughout the exercise. See that you're not dipping down. Extend, drop back down. Extend, drop back down. And then to the ground, okay? Do that once again, 10 reps per side to 30 seconds a side, roughly. And then go from there. On to the next thing. You don't have to do much except lay straight with your legs out and hands over your head. These are what we call body rolls. We're gonna use both upper and lower parts of the body. So the first movement is going to be 90 degrees hip flexion like so. Just bringing my knee up like that. From here, I'm going to rotate that leg across my body, all while maintaining contact with both of my arms. Okay, so as I rotate across, and I reach that point where I can't re roll anymore, that's when my opposite or the same arm, the left arm, is going to come up. Pay attention to this leg here. I'm going to push it down and finish the roll. Okay, so now I'm face down. How I'm going to initiate turning back around is this hip flare back like that, hip extension. Okay, be careful not to extend your leg too far over because you still want to fall onto your back in a straight line with your legs close together. So what that looks like is flare it out this way as far as I can before this arm also comes up. And then now I'm back on my mat, legs close together, not way over here or bent up, okay? We get caught when our leg goes too far back behind us. So we lift 90 degrees, slowly rotate to where your restriction is. Let the other arm come up, push this leg down and finish like so. Hip extend the leg back. Slowly stretch, 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 let this little arm fall back. So one more time all the way through, up, over, maintain upper body contact as long as I can. Let it lift, slide that leg down, fall flat, hip extend back, and then finish the roll that way. Okay, so the other side would be here, over to the right, or to my left, I should say, push my foot down, and fall over, hip extend back, like so, stretching that hip flexor, firing those glutes. We'll do that one more time on the right side. So knee up, rotate over, and as you can't anymore, let this arm come up, slide that leg down, finish the roll. Exhale, hip extend back, let this other arm follow, and then fall down like so. So we'll stand up for some upper body stuff. This is going to be anyone, a dowel, a broomstick of some sort, a mop, a swiffer. Uh, I'm sure you have something there. You're going to take one arm behind the back, like so. That goes into the dowel and the other one over the head. So what we're going to do is take this top hand and pull this bottom hand up my back. 
okay? Enough to stay tall and then back down. So we're working this arm here that's crossed behind my back, using this one to pull the dowel up and pull my arm behind my back a little more. Okay, so from the side view, it's here, pulled up. I'm not arching like that and I'm not down like this. Straight, pull my arm up for a few seconds, hold the top and then back down. Pull up and then back down. Now you should feel that mainly in the back side of your shoulder capsule for the arm that's crossed behind you. This is the one that we're working. So what I'll do next is switch the arms, the right arm behind my back. Typically the lower back is the better area for the hand to go. And then on the top behind my neck roughly is a good gauge. And then I'm going to pull gently that right arm up my back. Five second hold and then back down, releasing the tension. So from the side view, I will pull that straight up, hold, and then back down, releasing the tension. Pull up, hold, release the tension. Doing each side for roughly 10 pull up or 30 seconds of pulling up on either side. The next thing is going to be for the mid back and stretching your shoulder blades. Uh, you just need a post, maybe even a door jam would work. Something where you can create a grip with both hands. But we're going to face the pole straight forward. My arms can go a little bit of a lower angle and I'm going to just grip with both hands on the insides of my fingers. And I'm going to sit my chest back and lean back. Okay, so I'm gonna sit, sit my butt back as well as cave my chest in and let my shoulder blades go on the outsides of my shoulder, I'm sorry, my rib cage, stretching those muscles on the mid portion of my scapula and just holding that like so. If that position is too hard to hold for a long extended period of time, then you can stand back up and then sink your chest back in and sit your butt back down a little bit. So not only am I sinking my chest in, I'm also sitting my weight back and down to pull those shoulder blades outside my rib cage and stretch all the muscles in between. So if you're gonna hold it, hold it for about a minute. If you're gonna do repetitions, do 20 reps. Leaning, sitting back, and holding for about a 10 second stint. So you're not holding for an extreme amount of time if a minute is too long for you. And that's going to be for the scapula. Uh, the next thing is going to be shoulder slides. This is for upward and downward rotation of the scapula. You can do this on the mat or on the wall. The wall must be slippery as well as the ground for what you're doing for it to make the most sense. So we'll take a seat, kind of lean back a little bit onto the wall in this 90 degrees kind of freeze position. I give up, surrender, cactus arms, heel goal arms, whatever you want to call it. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide the elbows down to the sides and then slide the arm up and over the head as high as we can without forcing too much back arching, right? Trying to keep that back fairly straight or neutral, I should say. So there should be some space here and then back down. Basically doing shoulder presses lean against the wall. Worry about if you can't keep contact with the back of your arms to the wall, that's the goal, to so maintain as much contact as you can. If they don't stay there, then let them come off and go as high as you can comfortably. At the top, exhale and hold for a few seconds. Out of that hand range, up, over the head, and down. That's for the standing version. You do that for a minute at a time. Otherwise, we're gonna lay on the mat supine, which is on my back, uh, and this is going to work probably only on things like small uh, surfaces like this, hardwood, maybe some linoleum, um, so this might be better for some if we have that as a variety, but I'm just going to do the same thing, legs up, my lower back is pushed into the mat, so now I have a little more core engagement than standing on the wall version, and I'm just going to do the same thing, hands over the head and down. Just go down a little bit, hands over the head, and back down. And down. So that's going to be for upward and downward rotation of the scapula. You can do a standing or seated. Seated is going to be a little better um, if you have back problems or you want to try to get a little bit of core work out of it. Otherwise, same type of mobility. We'll do that either one for a minute of time. So next will be uh, 90-90, that's my favorite. 
I'm sure you've seen that in other mobility drills because it's a staple amongst uh, trainers. What we're going to do with mine though is get a little bit more specific while we're on each position to try to influence a little bit more of an area than another. So from here, starting from the middle, nice and tall torso, legs kind of spread out, heels with your feet pointing up like so. We're going to rotate the legs to two 90 degree angles. Okay, so this one on the side of me is out that way and the shin is down that way. I'm squared forward. So my shin is in line with my shoulders horizontally, okay? I don't want to be over here really, at least for the purpose of what we're doing here. So once we're here, we're nice and tall. This is going to work external rotation of this leg and internal rotation of this leg, which is what we're going to influence a little more of or try to hone in on more. So from here, making sure I'm tight, you can either lean forward and hold that stretch, which is the more traditional way, or what I would like you to try is, like we did in previous drills, is try to actively push this front leg through this angle, right outside of this foot here, into the ground as hard as you can for about five seconds, and then release it. Then inhale, and dig that leg that you're in front of into the ground again for another five, four, three, two, one, relax. And then what you notice is that if you couldn't lean forward as much in the beginning, you should be able to lean more and more and more gradually the more stints of those five second holds that you do. So start tall, actively dig this foot. You're trying to push this foot into the ground. You should feel that in the leg laying on. Uh, on the outer butt, right, or even in the adductor here in the inside of the leg, and push this leg into the ground, like you're trying to push it into the ground as hard as you can. Five seconds, release, try to lean forward, push it down, hold five seconds, release, and lean forward. Okay, so you'll spend about a minute pushing actively for five seconds, releasing, leaning forward, or you can just stand up. So there's multiple ways to do it. The main goal of this is to push the front leg into the ground. If that's just gonna be sitting up tall and doing that for five seconds and releasing for a minute. Otherwise you can push, hold for five seconds, lean forward a little bit. Repeat, holding that leg, push down five seconds, lean forward, okay, one minute. Next, you're gonna do it with this leg. You're going to take this foot and you're going to actively push that into the ground. So I'm trying to push this leg through the ground. You should feel that way up here and push. Four, three, two, one, relax. So for this one, we don't lean forward. We could lean back if we wanted to increase the stretch here and hold it like that. But for the purpose or the sake of gaining more internal rotation, we're just going to focus on pushing this foot into the ground. So push that back foot through the inside of this ankle back here, down into the ground, five seconds, release, and do that for a minute as well. And you would do it on both sides. So transitioning to the other side, with no hands, you would turn to the middle, or with hands, you would turn to the middle. Then we're gonna leave the front leg trailing and let this leg go on its own as long as we can until the other one matches. And then we'll go over to the other side, riding up my torso and repeating the same thing. Pushing the outside of this foot into the ground actively, five second hold, release, and do that for a minute, or you can add a lean after each stint of five seconds and go down further and further for that minute. And then the same goes with this trailing leg, where push that one for five seconds and hold it. If you wanna add a little bit more of a stretch to this trailing leg, you can lean back and hold that for a little bit. So there's some variation to that on both.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is going to be a warrior pose to wrap it up. Uh, so from the side angle, to get your set up for your feet, I like to do this little bit of like a ballet stance or uh, the heel to the arch, touching like so, to make sure once I step forward that I have a good little stance or spread, right? I don't want my foot too far to the left or too far to the right, vice versa. And from here, what we're going to do is just lean into that front leg with the arms forward and the other arm back, head over the front arm like that. And I feel mainly a stretch here in my TFL, quadricep, uh, origin, outside here. So what we're gonna do from here is just hold, bending that leg, leaning into that, and breathing and holding. If you wanna increase the stretch a little bit, you can rotate forward and put your arms over your head. You just wanna stay down and bend into that leg a little bit. And throughout any time, if you need tension release, you can just come up off that bend in the front leg and then come back down and then go back here. Okay, so hold, breathe into that front leg, stretching back here to create a little bit more of a stretch, rotate, put the arms forward and hold that as well. Now you can spend about a minute in that position, either the whole, 30, whole minute here, 30 seconds there or 30 seconds here, or you can kind of go back and forth for stints. And like I said, throughout the minute, if you feel it's too much, then you can kind of come off of it and then go back into it. Okay, and the same thing applies for the next side. Heel to arch, step forward, so I have a good enough spread. I'll lean into that front leg. If I need to adjust, I'll step my foot forward a little bit or back, depends on which leg is uh, giving you the issue. And then we're leaning forward. Looking over the front leg, reaching through either end, like someone's pulling that arm and someone's pulling that arm. Forward to deepen it a little bit over the head. Hold. Like I said, if you need to break tension, you can come off that knee and then lean back into it again. Hold that for 30 seconds and then hold this for 30 seconds. Or like I said, you can transition from here to here for the duration of the minute, trying to stay low as possible. And that should do it.